Let's take a look at this DVR wireless receiver and uh, FPV recorder. Let's see what we get in the box. It's a hinging box. There we go. It comes with instructions. These are pretty straightforward. Um, you know, typical lots and lots of small writing. You might need your reading glasses if you're old like me. Um, seem to explain most things reasonably well, but we'll look at that in a bit more detail later. Inside the foamy box, you get your little DVR recorder itself with a little LCD screen. Here we go, that's it, it's a nice pretty looking thing. Oh, wrong side, <laughs> there you go. Um, see the LCD screen there, a row of buttons here. I've got still got the plastic covering on. It's like my car, it's 20 years old, it still has a plastic on the seats. No, it doesn't, but I'll leave that on till I've had a bit of a play, safe scratching. It's got some controls up the top here. Um, these enable you to uh, have AV in and out, a USB connection, which is probably just for charging. Haven't looked at the instructions yet. Little flip up aerial on the side here. Now it's got a 5.8 gigahertz receiver in there, which works with the Fox Tech and the, the sort of um, that particular genre of 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. Won't work with your Immersion RC, your Fat Shark transmitter, okay? Wrong channels on the 5.8 band, but that's uh, a minor problem because all the stuff I'm doing is going to be using the, the other modules, which give you. Uh, full compatibility with this little device. Now, after we're taking that, there's a little remote control. Look at that. I think it's a remote control. What is it? I don't know. I can't do it. Oh, it doesn't seem to. No buttons. Well, oh, this slides backwards and forwards. It probably does something. I'll have to look in the instructions if all else fails, but it's not clearly obvious what that does. Must be a record. Must make it record. I don't know. Have a look. Um, now, there's a little square here because I looked when I was looking in the, looking in the instructions before, I noticed that. There's a version of this that actually comes with, if I can find it in time, comes with a little camera. See that? It's supposed to come with a camera. This one doesn't come with a camera, which is just as well, because why pay money for something you're not going to use if you're just using it for FPV video recording? Right, underneath, further down through the guts of it, we've obviously got a battery, a lithium battery, that goes in there to power it. Looks like a fairly standard sort of a lithium battery that you'd find for a cell phone or... Many of these other little devices. It's good that the battery is removable because it means you can replace it when it stops working. Uh, it's got an AC adapter, which won't work for me because it's got the straight pins. And I live in a country that has angled pins, but I've got plenty of adapters. So there you go. And that's the little, well, it's got a full USB connector on there. So I guess it must have a mini USB to full USB if it's going to go in the side of where is it? And it's going to go into there. There must be an adapter lead. And look at that. Lo and behold, there is an adapter, micro USB on one end, standard USB on the other. So that's pretty obvious as to what it does. Now we've got another lead here. It's all wrapped up. Sealed. Sealed. <laughs> Why did they seal this one and not the others? This one is another micro USB too. So why have we got two? I've no idea. The instructions will doubtless tell us why that is. Maybe I just got lucky and they threw a spare one and you never know. And then of course there is the ubiquitous... Um, jack plug to AV connector there. So we can use that for AV in or for AV out, I assume. But that's it. There's nothing else in the box. No one hiding in there. There we go. All done. Now I guess we should charge up the battery and see if it works. Now I have to say that getting the battery cover off was a bit of a mission. I was pretty sure it was going to slide, but it's quite a tight, tight fit to get it to slide. So there we go. Battery cover off. Take the brand new sparkly shiny battery out of its wrapper. There we go. It must go this way, I'm pretty sure. Does that cardboard come off? No, I guess not. That's just the way it is. And it must go in here like so. Or does it? It's quite a tight fit. It's almost like it was made in China, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, yeah, no, that... That's the way it goes, and that's the cover, so we just have to force it in. Ooh, ooh. Well, at least it's going to be a fairly... The connection should be good. Now, does the lid go back on? Yes, it does. So there we go, she's all put together. I wonder how you turn it on. Anyway, we'll get to that. I'll put it on charge for a little while, and we'll see what happens. The battery's all charged. I've put up the little antenna there. Now I'll turn this on. Like so, a little switch on the top there, and it'll introduce itself as a vibrator. Just like the Hobby King Wingman camera, a little vibrator. I don't know what purpose that is, but I think a lot of the electronics in there are common to the Wingman camera itself. You can see we're getting snow because 
the FPV backpack is not turned on at the moment. I'll just disconnect myself and go and plug it in. We'll see what happens. Now, as you can see, we have a picture. There it is, a picture of outside the workshop. And of course, it's a bit variable because this is not the best antenna and we've got a lot of iron and stuff between here and the receiver. So I can bring it up close, you can have a look. It's not too bad, actually. Resolution's not bad. Certainly for such a small device, it seems to do the trick. So what we'll do now is we'll do some FPV flying and see if it records just as well as it displays. Well, here I am, I'm out in the field and we're going to test out this new little mini DV uh, recorder thingy. And what I've got is the FPV backpack on the AXN here, as you can see, that's all set up. And I'm going to put this up on my hat. I've got some Velcro on my hat, so I'll put it into record mode, put it on my hat. We're just gonna use the standard little antenna here, which I don't expect too much from it. And we'll see what it records as I fly this around. Now, I don't have a spotter, so I'm not flying FPV. Have to fly visual and we'll turn it all on and see what happens it's making all sorts of buzzing noises now i'm putting a battery on the axn here because i've lost the lead my balance lead to jst don't know what i've done with it. it's gone somewhere but it'll turn up I'll make another one then i'm bound to find the original one that's the way these things work let's have a look yes now we've got a brilliant the video's come up nicely now i have to go to record if i can where are we record I think it's recording, yeah, can't tell, yeah we'll see what happens, right I'll put my sunglasses on, stick this on my hat, also turn on my hat cam, it's quite a bit of fluffing around to do here when you haven't got anyone to help you, you got to do it all yourself, so hat cam on, and recording, Sunglasses on. It's a very sunny day today. Let's have a look. And this is recording. Stick it on my hat. This means at least I'll be looking in the in the same direction as the. Oh, it's not going to stay on there. That velcro. Oh dear. Oh no. I'll stick it. No. Don't know where to stick it. I'll just have to put it on the ground. Very poorly thought out. This never mind. That's the ultimate test, isn't it? If it works when it's recording off the ground, it's got to be good. Here we go. didn't help that the camera fell over but I'll review the footage and see what it looks like so that was the recording with the uh, built-in antenna it wasn't very good it did drop out quite a bit I'm not sure if that going black and white was actually due to the cheap Hobby King camera which seems to have developed default 
or whether it was due to the changing signal strength and so forth. But what I've done now is I've mounted it on my pole, my antennas or receivers up the top using a separate receiver. I'm going to use the AV in, which should give us a much, much better signal. We'll do it all again using the AV in and using this just as a digital video recorder. There we go, that's what you see when you record stuff on this little mini DV recorder. Now, I have to say that the built-in receiver is not so flash. Well, perhaps it's not the receiver, but the antenna. This little antenna that you have on the system is only very small, and I left it sitting on the ground when I recorded those flights, so probably a worst-case test. I did later on put it up on the tripod, and the results were a little bit better, but still not what you call long-range FPV suitable. But, of course, you're not going to use this for long-range FPV. This is just... For giving to people who want to see what's going on in the model, standing beside you, they can hold this up and they can see what you see most of the time until it flies beyond the range of this receiver. Um, and it's also for recording your events. And as you see in the second video, when I plugged it into the antenna that I usually use to power my goggles, um, the results were far better. Although, unfortunately, the Hobby King camera was having a bit of a spaz day today. And it's the first time I've flown that camera with the sun low on the horizon. There you go, my charger, every time. It's the first time I've flown the um, Hobby King $17 camera with the sun sitting low on the horizon. And I was quite surprised to see just how much that really rooted the picture. When we got the sun shining right into the lens, it was all over. It was totally black or totally white for quite a long time. So I would not recommend the Hobby King $17 camera for use when the sun is low on the horizon. It's really going to freak you out if you lose the picture for that length of time. Uh, but it, Flying at midday, it's fine because you don't have the sun shining in the front of the camera. But that's why I'm looking at some other cameras as well. But back to this. During the recording, I noticed the frame rate seems to be a little low as viewed on the screen. Maybe that's just a function of the playback. I'm not sure. I'll have a look on the computer and see if it's any better. Um, the quality certainly seems fine. 640 by 480, that's VGA resolution I was using to record that video, which is probably all you get back from a FPV camera anyway. You can go down to quarter VGA, which is 320 by 240. That would save you space on your memory card, but it's going to look a bit blockier, not so clear. Now, I'm going to play a bit more with this thing. I'm going to put a faster SD card in there, micro SD card. This one's only a class 4. It may be slowing it down. I also need to see what format their files are in. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll put it along the bottom of this video just here so you can see because I don't know. I have to wait till I get home and plug it into the computer. And I'd say for 100, just over 100 bucks, this is actually not bad value. If you're keen and you're really into FPV, then 100 bucks for this is quite good. It gives you the ability to record your flights. It gives you the ability to show other people what's going on. 
And of course, you can use it as a general DVR as well, I suppose. Plug it into something, record whatever. Plug a camera in there, you can use it as a video camera. Use it as a backpack on a little camera. But build quality is good. The accessory pack is pretty good. Um, nothing really to bitch and grizzle about at all. So it's nice to have a good product that I can recommend based on my experience so far. But as I say, check back because I like to use these things for a little bit longer before I go thumbs up. You never know what is going to happen in the next few weeks of use. So I reserve final judgment, but it certainly looks like a very nice product from here. Thank you for watching. There'll be more FPV videos, more FPV reviews coming up very soon on RC Model Reviews.